What makes a person of interest? Coach Michael Burke cuts to the chase, interviewing some of the biggest names in the world. How do they think? What makes them tick? What are their thought processes? And how they became a person of interest. We're live today. We're live right now on Facebook. Hey, listen, we both have been through a lot in life, but this is uh, truly something we've never seen. Is that correct? So, yeah, it's something I've never seen. You know, it's an, it's an interesting thing since I've owned my business over the last 12 or 13 years. You know, I've never seen any type of restriction like this. Uh, I've never seen, I've never seen anything where the government could come in and say, Hey, you can't work for the next two weeks. You can't show up at work. And, and I'm thinking about that, Tim, because I'm a small business owner and yeah. I have employees and I have a payroll and I have revenue we need to produce. And I, you, you know, so I'm just thinking about that and, and I appreciate you coming on with me because I wanted to really talk about how do we, for all the people that are out there watching guys like you and I who are out there doing it, how do we turn these setbacks into comebacks? How do we, I've got some philosophies on principles that I use for any adversity because I define adversity as a departure away from the ideal scene. It wow, is. Wow, that's, that's very good. You had an ideal scene of how this is going to go. It's not going the way we thought it would. It is an unwanted outcome, right? Like that's how I define adversity. It is an unwanted outcome. So if yeah. you were talking to the people out there and you were coaching, if you, if you came in and you were coaching Coach Burt, right? Yes. And Coach Burt's got Michael Burt Enterprises and he's got employees and he's got team members. What, what would you be saying to me to get my mindset keep my mindset strong during these times? I think one of the things that's interesting is that when you life coach somebody, you know, it started with Dennis Waitley with the wheel. Yes. We talked about the physical, the clarity of mind, the mindset. Yes. And the, the job, the finances, the family, mm -hmm. the physical. So what's happening is on the wheel of all the different parts of our life, it's all being affected by this virus. Yes. So people are being affected physically, mm -hmm. mentally, mm -hmm. job, finances, family, recreation, hobbies. When, when you look at the NBA shutting down, the NHL, mm -hmm. Disneyland, mm -hmm. so where people could usually get away from a crisis by entertainment, mm. they're not even able to do that anymore with the same type of entertainment. So what we have is, you know, a subject that we've been working on for years. The first comeback book I wrote was in 1992, hmm. simply called It's Time for Your Comeback. And then truly, and I say this everywhere I go, Coach Bird, you are the best at really helping us to execute a plan. Yeah. So I think that we're going to have a great dialogue today that's going to really help people with the right skills, Yep. the right mindset, right? Right. And then helping them to add the right fuel to do what they need to do in life. So here's what I would say, is that to clean up a mess, we got to take one room at a time. Hmm. So if you had a big house and there was a mess in all these rooms, I got to clean one room at a time. Yep. And so I got to say, what is my standout issue? So you're watching right now, what is your standout issue? So our standout issue for all of us is to not get a virus. Right. But there are some people who have the virus. Mm -hmm. so, so, so now they have to be treated. Mm -hmm. And there are some people that are restricted in motion and movement. They're stuck in countries they don't even live in. Mm -hmm. so, so the first thing I would say as a life coach is we have to deal with the standout issue. What mm -hmm. do you think of that? Yeah, I, I, I agree. And, you know, I think about the, on Thursday, I was very, I left, we, we went out on Thursday and we created the lodge. We set the lodge up for the event that you and I and Sharon Lecter were going to do and Johnny Wimbry and these folks. And we had it beautiful. And, and, you know, then, then, then things continued to get a little bit worse. So we decided to postpone that. And I left Thursday night discouraged. That means to take courage away, right? Yes. And, 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 and but I thought about this because I went down to our condo in Nashville, Tennessee, and I spent, my wife was in Florida at our house down there, and I spent three days to myself evaluating, evaluating the business, evaluating life, evaluating, clean, like, as you said, cleaning up the room, trying yes. to figure out what, what, what we were going to do next, how we were going to do it. And I tell people confusion is randomness in motion. 
right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's three states. You're stopped, you are starting, or you are in motion. Well, many times we don't have a chance to, to look at the machine of our life until we stop. And what happened last week forced me to stop. And it forced me to look at where is the confusion? Where, what can we do here better? How can we use this to accelerate? Because the reality is there will be a danger to your business, whether it be this virus or something else external. You know, I'm, yeah. a, I'm a Covey disciple. And oh, yeah. Covey always taught us to focus on our circle of control, to not, to not live in our circle of concern because we can't do anything about our circle of concern. We can only it. do something about our mindset. So I came into the office today, met with my team, and I'm like, okay, let me tell you my personal philosophy. Never allow another person to stand between you and your destiny right? Let's focus on circle of control versus circle of concern. Yes. We're not given a spirit of fear and timidity, like how to, how to big time people handle adversity. So when you, you coach people through, through adversities in their life, what's the model that you use? How do you, how do you help them? Well, my, the, the model that I use is a biblical model. And uh, the thing I love is that it seems like everybody's open to that because so much of coaching has come from Psalms, Proverbs, Ecclesiastes, as you know, which is known as the wisdom books, yes. 5,000 years of, of wisdom. So, so one thing that I've been teaching, Coach, is staying steady in unsteady times. Yes. So there's a scripture in the Bible, as you know, the Apostle Paul, and he says, be ye steadfast, unmovable, mm -hmm. and always abounding. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, this whole idea of being steady I was looking this up and it means to be stable, to be firm, to be fixed, and to be constant. Yep. So to be steady in unsteady times, as you teach, means to be steady in your mindset, mm -hmm. steady in your mood set, mm -hmm. and also steady in your words. Right. So we gotta watch how we think, okay? We gotta watch our moods, but we gotta watch what we say into the atmosphere. Yes, yes. And I, and I think that's important. You know, many years ago, Tim, when I was a high school basketball coach, we had a year that we were supposed to win the whole thing. We were ranked high in Tennessee. And I had this great basketball player named Anne Marie Lanning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and Anne Marie got injured. And she was going to be out. The doctor, team doctor came to me and said, she's going to be out for 10 games, coach. And our team morale just completely went down the drain. My, my team thought we worked this hard. We've been working years for this opportunity. And I sat in my office with my team and my staff and I said, I have to come up with a way to use this adversity. Yeah. To use this to accelerate. <clears throat> I got to sell my team on this is the best thing that ever happened to us. It's unwanted. It's a departure away from the ideal scene, but there are people in the room who have so much more to give. And I came up with five rules of a crisis during that period. Okay, I'm ready. And, 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 and rule number one is not why me, but what is this trying to teach me? Okay. You know, instead of asking the question, why me? Why is this happening to me? Why, why being a victim to this? I ask, what's this trying to teach me? That's a bigger play. That was step one. Okay. Then, I come up, then I come up with what was, my what was my contribution to this adversity? What did I do to create this? And, and in this case, I didn't do anything to create it. I just yeah. got to deal with it. So between stimulus and response is a space and in that space lies our ability to choose our response, right? Yeah. And, and number three, to your point, we got to get stable. Because when we're emotional is when we make bad decisions. We got to get stable. We got to be steady in un unsteady times, right? Then, nice. then we got to get help. We got to be willing to reach up to people who have wisdom. And, and, that and, way. Yeah. and then the fifth thing we got to do is we got to find a way to get busy. We got to find a way to take action. Now, that may mean from your house. That may mean if you can't go to work. Because I'm thinking about all these restaurants that can't host people. How are they going to generate revenue? I'm thinking about businesses where their employees are not coming to work. I'm thinking about like how, how but there is a way. My granddad always said, if you could, if you got to want to, you can find a how to. And oh, I yeah. think that's what it's forcing us to do. I, I, I love this. And, you know, part of the thing that you just said is that there are life interruptions. And in the case that you're talking about, you lost a player. And then you said, like, what happened? Mm -hmm. But the response is so, so important. The challenge, Coach Bird, is a lot of people don't know how to respond. Right. Yeah. Uh, they get hit. They fall on the mat. They don't know how to get back up. Yeah. That's and right. that's why I like what you said. You said you got to reach out for help. So one thing that I love that we're doing is that we are going to come to different cities mm -hmm. 
and we are going to have a gathering of people that feel like they've had the shout knocked out. Of them. That's right. Because uh, there's, there's times where life will interrupt you and knock the shout out of you, yeah. which is happening right now there's, to literally millions of people around the world. So what Coach and I are doing is so needed, it's wanted, and we're going to do it in the uh, Tennessee area. He'll tell you about that in a moment. Yeah. And then we're going to do it in Dallas, but we're going to take it to different cities. But what it's going to be, it's a, it's a place of refuge, yeah. learning, growing, building, mm -hmm. partnership. And we're going to so strengthen them, Coach, that when they go through another crisis, they won't handle it the same. Yeah. Well, you talked about it there. I was thinking about uh, one of my favorite sermons was by Jimmy Evans, who did, did a sermon on how to handle discouragement. And he yeah. talked about King David. If King David would have known all the adversity he was going to face when he became king, he probably would have said, don't sign me up for this, right? <laughs> but, but, he had a, but he had a mindset that I have adopted. And the mindset is, it's, go, it's going to be a fight, but we're going to win. Wow. And, and if you have that mindset going into the day, there's going to be tribulation. There's going to be trials. There's going to be struggle. Like it's going to be a fight. Like King David had a mindset. It's going to be a fight, but I'm going to find a way to win. We're going to find a way to win. And I think over the last couple of weeks, like, to your point, there's a lot of people that don't have that mindset. It becomes a fight. They get knocked down and they don't know how to get back up. And so, and, so good. And, and then they just stay down on the mat for whatever knocks them down in life, whatever knocks the shout out of people in life. It could have been a divorce. It could have been an adversity. It could have been a tragedy. It could have been a business failure. It could have been a personal failure, but they really don't know how to get back up with that mindset. So, so one of the things that I want to do the, the next um, few days and going into next week is um, get back on Facebook live with you and start to push people towards Tennessee and Dallas towards that event. Because to me, for you guys that are watching and, and I want to make sure you share this to other people, this is not just a seminar, a, a gathering, a mastermind to just make you feel better. Mm -hmm. this, is, uh, this is a mandatory meeting for people who want to lead their family out of a storm. Yeah, it's good. See, Coach, somebody has to have the guts to lead the family out of the storm. It's yeah. going to take one. <laughs> That's right. And what Tim's talking about is we've got two events coming up, uh, June 3rd in Dallas. Mel's here with me, right, Mel? June 3rd in Dallas is when we're going to be in Dallas. When life knocks the shout out of you, it's going to be me, Tim Story, Sharon Lecter, Johnny Wimbry, Hoss Pratt, Nate Alcor, Cody Askins. It's going to be a, pretty, a very powerful lineup. And I guarantee you, every person on that stage at some point has had the shout knocked out of them. Yes. And, 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 and has worked with lots of people. So June 3rd in Dallas. And then we're going to do June 25th at my lodge in Tennessee. It's going to be an incredible day. This is going to give us a chance to, to get even more people in the room. And I like this concept. It's going to be a mandatory meeting. If it's you a mandatory to... meeting. If you, if you care about your family, <laughs> you got to get equipped. <laughs> That's right. If you care about your family, if you care about your business, if you care about the things that you, you got to have the mindset folks. And so let me close with this. I used to, I hired a, a Marine for many years to be my personal trainer and I would show up in the mornings and um, he would always joke with us. It was four men and we'd show up and he'd say, good morning, ladies. Are y'all ready to work out? <laughs> and then he would look at us and say, it's about time that you get your mind ready for what your body is about to do. And that's how we started every day. Cause we didn't go in there with the mindset ready. We went in the mindset of, we don't want to be here. It's five o'clock in the morning. We don't want to push this hard. Oh, yeah. And that one comment every day, it's time to get your mind ready for what your body's about to do. And, and, and that would get us going. So Tim, thank you for joining me for this uh, Facebook live. Um, I said, I want to communicate with our groups today. And I said, who do I want to do it with? I want to do it with Tim's story. I love it. Setbacks to comebacks. Get your tickets at coachberg.com. Shout. And we will give you the strategies and tactics you need when life knocks the shout out of you. So thank you, big guy. Have a great day. And I appreciate you. See you soon. Life See is soon. so good. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right, guys. Just want to, just want to say Tim's story right there. Listen, I, I've, been, I've been on interviews and podcasts all day long about mindset, about how to handle adversity. I want to take it out of the context for just a second that it's just about this virus. The reality is you need to be ready when life knocks a shout out of you. And it's going to, okay? I could give you 10 examples of how it knocks a shout out of me 10 times a day. 
<laughs> right? It ain't just it ain't just right now. It's every day. Okay, if you're going to do big things in the world, and it didn't knock the shout out of me when I was doing little things, guys. It didn't knock the shout out of me when I was doing little things because it wasn't enough people that cared. There weren't enough people depending on me when it was just me. So, so when you start to do big things in the world, life's going to knock the shout out of you. It doesn't matter if it's this virus or it's something else. Something will come along that will be a departure away from the ideal scene. And how you respond between stimulus and response is that space. And in that space lies your ability to choose your response. That's, it's, it's, game, it's game, set, and match. Okay? So what's our motto? It's going to be a fight, guys, but we're going to find a way to win. It's going to be a fight but we're going to find a way to win. So have a great day. I look forward. Go to coachburk.com backslash shout right now. Get your tickets. This is in June. It's in the summer. No excuses. As, as, as Brother Tim said, it's a mandatory meeting if you're serious about your future. You guys have a great day.